So we are actually here at Aix-les-Bains. You can check on Google Maps if you don't know Aix-les-Bains. But uh, we're here at Musilac and we just checked our good friend Yarwal Pupo, a French guitar player, who is playing on this stage tonight. So we are going to see the rival sounds, we are going to see the stray cats and we are going to see like like we pretty much did at the Elfest. So pretty much like the artists we try to work with and we try to hang out with. So I hope you like this episode and I hope you, you check it out. You know, it's beautiful here. There is a beautiful lake here. And um, yeah, that's such that's an, an amazing venue, you know. So uh, I hope you like it. Pourquoi celle-là un peu tout Toutes les tournées d'Alivet, enfin les, les dernières de 2015 à machin, et puis euh, euh, avec moi, enfin je les joue. Je les jouais plus là, je l'ai ressorti. Ouais comme ça Ouais. Et les micros c'est ceux d'origine ou ouais, tu ouais. les as. Non, les potards sont pétés là-bas. Ouais bah c'est. <rire> Elle fait de la scène quoi. Hein. Ouais. Putain même ici. Putain ils t'ont mis un érable en dessous. J'ai jamais vu ça. Il y a une espèce d'érable paumelé en dessous. Putain, il est incroyable. Putain, ils ont, ils ont choisi une bonne avant de te la filer. Ouais, ça, bah ouais, ouais, ouais. Et ça, c'est ta guitare euh, number one euh... Non, la number one, c'est plutôt. Euh... Non, parce que c'est quand même. Euh... Dans les clubs, c'est quand même un peu gros à trimballer. Ah, ouais, d'accord. Ah, ça, c'est ça, ça, chambé. Putain, il est légère. Je trouve que c'est quoi C'est. Ça c'est juste pour la protéger ouais, ou... pour la protéger, ouais. 70 ou 71, je sais pas. pas vrai. Ouais. Je, je crois que c'est la plus légère du genre. Hein. Ouais. C'est incroyable. Ah ouais, elle est vraiment super. Et ça, c'est celle que tu joues le plus sur cette tournée. Ouais. Et ma strat, euh, là par contre, c'est un kit pourri quoi. C'est un JTM, un tu vois, les, 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 Ouais, ouais. C'est un manche, un vieux manche Fender que j'avais euh, d'une autre strat. Et, euh, truc, et des micros euh, de catch, quoi. Et ça, tu fais toujours ça sur tes guitares ouais, Pour les ceintures, pour les ouais. ceintures ouais. ouais. D'accord. Ouais, donc ça, c'est capot. Euh, pas d'accord d'acheter elle, elle est super, non, non, elle est super. Hein. Ouais, putain. Ça, ça, ouais, résonne. Ouais, c'est super, hein. Et tu les utilises toutes dans le set. Hein tu ouais, 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 ouais. Tu les utilises tous. Ça, ça, c'est cool. Bah ouais, du Sender, ouais. La couleur est sympa, hein. Ouais. Ça c'est des bonnes grattes, ouais. Ouais, vraiment super. Ça marche bien ça. Ouais, tu as, tu as jamais besoin d'accorder. Ah ouais Non. J'ai entendu une fois. On a hâte de voir ça sur scène alors. Ah ouais, carrément. Ah. Tu joues combien de temps Une heure. Bon, bah, c'est cool. Scott Holiday des Ravelson. On suit le patron. Pendant que notre ami Yarol est en train de jouer. Belle ambiance de concert à Musilac. I'm so honored to be with our buddy uh, uh, Scott Holiday from the Rival Sun. Hey man. To talk about gear and his guitar. That we were talking about what I love, especially with your son. It's like it's so unique and that you created it. Thank you. Yeah. It's yeah, that's an honor. You, uh, you know, for 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 years, that's what you we say. That's what, what we say. As you come up, and for years, I've been trying to kind of craft something that seemed really authentic and my own. And of course, you're going to borrow things from your favorites. That's what everyone does. That's even the advice I'd give give like kids and stuff. If you're trying to do your own thing, steal from everyone, take from everything, learn everything from your heroes, until all of a sudden, you decide I've picked from so many that this thing that I've created from all that, it becomes my own thing. And that's kind of what you do. And then, you know, you cross over and you stop referencing your, your heroes so much and you end up just having your own, your own flavor. It's difficult, it takes time. But um, that you said that to me a minute ago is a great honor. Thank you. Yeah, it's. I mean, because a lot of people like are, are when they're watching new bands, they're like, "Oh, this band remembers me something, or remembers me like Jimmy Page or Richie Blackmore." But that's really something that we love, and it, I think especially in France, France is very like a big fan of the rival sons in general. Yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, I think you what you did is like 
creating unique guitars and creating not playing like you were stating that like you you don't have any strats or regular tilly in your rig now i don't i not that i don't love them i love a, a strat i love a tally i mean i think really the most manly guitar out there is probably the uh those first esquires there's just no nonsense the simplest shape the plastic you know components the one pickup on the simple shape it's just if you can make that sound good and do well with that That's that's tough and that's manly. Ironically, all these guitars I have are like very colorful and interesting shapes and three pickups and Bigsby's and all this. But um, I'm a guitar geek, you know. Yeah. And um, just like you, you see so many things over time. You keep pictures. You see your favorite color on something or a shape or a year or something that someone used and on and on. And we build up these ideas over time. So when the band started to get you know, more popularity. Uh, I had builders come to me going, hey, we'd like to work with you. Guys like Milo DeWin, and I'm going, I'd love to work with you, yeah. And they're like, well, do you have any ideas? And I'm like, yes, I have a lot of ideas, let's work. <laughs> and um, like that, or, or, or my great friend Doug Cower, who I do, do a lot of guitars with, I always have, uh, I always have like color ideas and this and that, things, things I want to do so there's no shortage of, of uh, ideas. And stuff. So you'll see that in the collection. You might have already seen it. I don't know if we're gonna have how this is gonna fit into the segment. <laughs> yeah. But um, you'll see a lot of different colors, materials, shapes, builders, um, and I'll just say they're they're all really, really, really particular. They're yeah. all like things that I really thought about and really spent time with with the builder, and got really excited about. And all of them play unbelievably and sound great. And they're just really original, fun guitars. It's been really fun making it happen. Yeah, we were talking last week about, uh, especially a Fano or so that you did, yeah. I, I think, and you said like, okay, when Fano contacted me and when they're asking me if I wanted to, buy, to to create a guitar with them, and you you were telling me, and I was very impressed about that, about that you did, you had everything in there. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's like, I, you, I can be proud of myself or impressed with my <laughs> knowledge, or I can also feel like, God, why do I know all that? This is embarrassing. But when they ask, they, they don't just go, well what color do you want the guitar they go okay what what wood do you want for the back what wood for the sides what wood for the top and just because i'm such a geek i know that all of those woods make a difference what they are so if you're doing a mahogany back and you want to do like put add a little more brightness and airiness you might do a maple top you know yeah. or ash on top you know and it's semi hollow so i can do something darker and it still works Um, and it came down to like even the undercoat of the painting like I was telling you I I had it's a black guitar But I told them to paint it white underneath so as it wore yeah. out you would see that white like, you know Almost like an old fender thing or something. Yeah um, And the pickups and the and the and the saddles, you know what material the saddles are We did nylon on the Fano and the nut and the tuners and the material for the headstock, you know, and the, even the logo. I was a fan, a fan of early Dennis, his early work, and he had this raised kind of pawn shop logo. It was like a decal, but like a big, it came off the, you know, like a yeah. sticker. So, so they stopped doing that. They painted on there now, and I go, do you have any more of those old logos? Because I really liked how it was real pawn shoppy. <laughs> We've got one more left, so they used it for me. Wow. And um, I used a metal guard on it, metal that, that, that worked on the head. So, yeah, on and on like this, the binding, a tuxedo binding with the white black paint and it, it's just so nerdy but it's kind of the fun of it okay so uh, this interview is very interesting but we wanted to make like slightly fun in it so let's do let's talk about the beauty of the sites the beauty of the venue the beauty of the lake of Musilac and it's like this mix of mountain this mix of you know almost ocean it's like so big so fresh here and it's so hip That, you know, we just wanted to make fun into the middle of this interview. Thanks for watching this, you know, little interlude. I hope you'll enjoy Matt's Guitar Shop TV and Matt's Guitar Shop the Wild Channel. And I hope to see you in a few seconds to, with Scott to check the last part of the interview. Thank you. Today you're one of the uh, big influences for young guitar players because you created something on your own finally and you created like it's like every song from what i saw last week and and to me that was my first gig with you yeah and so what i saw last week is like every song and every rival songs era has like his own sound and yeah. it's like like you're quite attached finally to get back to 
you know each era sound and uh, and by the way for the vintage enthusiast I was very happy to see that double neck on the rig too the, <laughs> the, the EDS 1275 yeah. too I bring a couple old things out with me on this run this one I have my, my my double neck that I use for feral roots and I use it for look away and all directions and then uh, <laughs> sorry you wear a gondolier <laughs> 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 um, and then I've, I've taken for years one of my first acquisitions when this band started because you know, I switched all my gear out I was using certain gear for other bands when I did this band I changed all the gear the effects the amps the guitars I kind of started over yeah. and uh, one of the I think the second guitars that I got for this project the Rival Sons was a 62 Jazzmaster last year slab board and it's got these black face knobs on it I got it from a gypsy jazz place a gypsy jazz guitar dealer and had been looking for a jazz master really really hard and um, a fellow nerds out there will know that when you do that you wake up like I'm looking for a 60s tally so I'm just gonna start looking or you know what I mean or I'm looking for a 50s strat so you wake up every day and you just comb the whole internet like oh there's a really good deal one on here. I got found one for like six grand and it's got a reef in or you know what I mean? That's fine. I can do a deal with a reef in or it's been like routed, but you can't see it. So I want this good deal. So we're looking constantly and I was looking for this jazz master and uh, this, this one popped up and it was a really good deal at an acoustic guitar store, no less. So I like immediately went, yes, I'll take it. And the guy wrote me the next day and he said there was about 35 people behind you that wanted that guitar. You were first, do you want it? I had no money at the time. The band was brand new and I went, uh, I do, I want it. So credit card, ching. <laughs> That's how I got that guitar. And it go through. <laughs> yeah, it went, it went through and it put me in debt and it was the best debt I ever made because it's been a lovely guitar. So I take the 62 Jazzmaster out. Um, I just use it now in this set for Face of Light, I think the way we're, we're doing it, which is what I recorded the song with. I like to do that. I like to use the, the guitar I recorded the song with as much as I can. Okay. Like it has an energy in it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean those vintage guitars, is this, and this is what you can compare the, to, to, yeah, the about creating a new guitar with like the cover for example yeah. and, and like having a real vintage guitar and finally appropriate yourself like its personality because they're all different yeah so uh yeah that I'm just must too. have something i'm picky too so you know i'll get a guitar from doug and i have lots of vintage guitars in the studio at all times we have old uh, old 335s which are just pretty much the holy grail to me you know these late mid late 50s uh, uh 335s, 330s, they're, they, they're pretty hard to beat. But uh, even with all these guitars, old guitars around, I'll still get something from Doug and go, I really like how this feels. I really love how it sounds and still use them. So it's not that, um, that I'm just using what's available. It's, it's much more detailed than that. You know, it's, it's actually like I have everything. And these ones that are getting built for me, they're very particular how they feel and sound. And they've just worked really, really great for me. Yeah, they're finally like the war machine of each song. Finally, you need yeah. to play on. So, uh, but so we, we hope to see you. I, we know that Scott is quite busy today. And uh, we hope to see you at the shop. I, see, I think you guys are stopping by Paris in November or something like that. 100% I'm coming by the shop. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Of course. Let's dork out, man. Yeah, I hope so. Get yeah. some Firebirds in there. <laughs> <laughs> we got a seven for you ready. I'm gonna check that thing out. <laughs> Thank man. you, Scott. Cool, man. That was good. Thanks. <laughs> Hasta luego. See you in a little bit. So here we go at Musilac, and uh, after speaking with our buddy Scott, we are going to check his guitars. And uh, as you can see, Matt, there is like many of them for the show of the night. They're going to play in like 30 minutes. And we are, we are like with Ben his tech and uh, Ben just said like when I asked him like if I just you know can do the rig rundown with him he said no Matt just just go and uh, do it yourself so I'm going to do it myself so this one is like the 62 jazz master that Scott is playing you know for like pretty much a lot of his you know, main thing, and that's kind of, I think it's a 62, that Scott had like a pretty decent deal on it, and um, I mean, check, check this guitar, it's like, this thing is like, you know, played by the guy, and it's, it's like what you need, so it's like really a big machine. 
Check this one now. So that one was like the one we were speaking about when Scott was contacted by, by Faino about making a guitar. That one was like, you know, the what you can see on details that like he has it white underneath the black paint. So that, that one is like something really particular on it. And um, he has it for the whole Fano logo that he loved much better than the new one. And he knew like everything, you know, about it. And he, like, it's like he woke up and he imagined the guitar right away. So it's like something he uses like quite often live when I saw him last week. So that one sounds great. It has Filtertron on it, uh, TV Jones Filtertron. And it's like the late, uh, the late 60s bridge kind of gives some style and a vibramate here. So yeah, that's something really special. So. As you can see, like, you can see the white underneath the black. And that's, you know, what you ask about, about it. You know, it sounds great. And uh, it has, a, like, pretty medium action on it. And, uh, yeah, that's a great one. So let's see the other one. Okay, so this one has a pretty much interesting story. It's like, Scott has always dreamed about getting this guitar. And it was the, the guitar that he had on the screen, on, the, on his phone, like for years. And Gretsch just didn't make one. So uh, it's basically like a penguin, Gretsch penguin, uh, you know, like, like a middle of 50 style, uh, like 56, 57 with three pickup and one day Gretsch was like just thankful about Scott making you know like just Scott using like the Gretsch Bixby and um, they proposed to Scott to make him a guitar so finally Stefan Stern who is like the top guy of Gretsch now just did like this guitar and he did the exact same one that Scott has always dreamed to have so there it is, it's a very important guitar for him and it sounds amazing, it sounds amazing, slide even with the big B on it and you know that thing stays in tune so we can say thank you to Gretsch for that one So who's playing next door? Graham Nash is playing next door and it's like <gasps> Graham Nash is playing next next to us now and it's like you know this guy is a music legend and uh, when I when I saw that he was selling Dwayne Allman says G on uh, the Re Heritage Auction in middle of July I was like I want that guitar but I can't so that was you know it's a big thing for me big thing for me to see him you know so close and checking Scott's guitar at the same time it's like that's why you're doing this you know so Nice job. Yeah, I mean, you can do that uh, normally, but today we can. Um, so that one, I think, was made by Cower. So basically, Doug Cower is like, you know, the guy who is making Scott's Firebird-shaped guitar, and that one was played as hell for, by Scott, and he's using for pretty much, you know, a lot of songs. And you know, look at the look at the color. You know, it's like look at the silver and then it's the white paint, and it's three pickups again, filter trans, TV Jones with a Vibramate Bixby, and you know that one is like it's one of the guitars that the rival sons fan really like. You know, so it's specially built for Scott and it's something really special. Check out the tuners. It's like. Unique tuner. I, personally, I've never seen that kind of tuner, so good job, cover guitar. So now, let's get to the to the Coco Rico and the French stuff, because those two guitars, I'm going to show you, were built by 
Melo Duende, and they're from them from they're from here. They're from France. So that one is like the ES335 version of Melo Duende, and they build like guitars for Scott for for years now, and it's so beautiful. It's like you see the copper top, and it's, it's all made by metal and by hand. I think in Burgundy in France, and I mean that one is like. I think Scott doesn't have it for a while, but he's going to play it as hell. And again, it's TV Jones, like the 70s TV Jones, the 70s Gretsch pickup style on the neck, and the, like a TV Jones filter throne on the bridge. So that one is like a new guitar for Scott. So that one I can be more prouder to hold it. That guitar is the electric man guitar. So basically, when Scott and I were talking about the idea of da 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 da, -da that guitar recorded this. That guitar was in the in the video clip, and it's again made by Milo Duende. And that's, I mean, for guitar dealers, that's one of the best modern guitar you could see in the memorabilia world. And that's something again. TV Jones and Vibra, uh, Bixby with the Vibra made on it. And that guitar Scott is like very identified too. And it's such a legendary modern guitar. So, and it's from here. It's from Paris, it's from Burgundy, France. So that's just amazing. Really proud to hold this one. one I think is like yeah that's like a 70s factory second EDS 1275 that Scott is playing because he recorded some song in the last record Ferrer Roots with it and it's like look at that it's a, it has like the Jimmy Page's vibe that guitar is playing I think two songs with it in the set and that's I mean for us, like vintage guitar addicts, it's like one of the holy grail of vintage guitar. Like everybody has dreamed about getting one. So, yeah, that's quite. And I think Scott has it since the late 90s, from what he told me. And uh, that's pretty much, you know, it's a pretty good shape. And he's going to play it on stage because he decided to to have this out, you know. And. That's such, you know, a legendary instrument to carry and again, what I love is that he's, he's playing it into a scholarly day style, you know, putting a capo in the third fret, that's such amazing, you know, it's just amazing. This one is like a Firebird 7. It's a Firebird 7. Looks like vintage to me, and it's like might be refinished or whatever. I think maybe a 90s one. But he played it. He played the hell out of it. And again, look at those tuners. It's like I've never seen those tuners before on another Firebird. And it's, it proves that Scott is very unique about his choice of gear. So it's basically Firebird 7. And um, I think I would say like pill and blue finish that it's, it's starting fading on the back of the neck. And I mean, that's probably one of the most important Rival Sons guitars. So, and he plays it a lot of songs again. I think uh, that may be the main one. And the white one, the white cover, might be the spare. I don't know. We'll check him. Uh, later, but, uh, that's amazing. It's amazing. We try to do the best we could and <laughs> without the man himself, but he's in on interview right now and he just trusts us enough to check his guitars without him. So that's just, you know, it's slightly messy because of the sound, etc. But it's such a good moment I wanted to share with the followers, you know.
especially he's just about to play those guitars in about an hour. Yeah, exactly. It's, he's about to play the guitar. We're going to watch the show next to the stage. Thank you very much. So that's Ben. Scholarly days, you know, architects, if I can say. Thank you very much, Ben, for letting us. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy yeah. The show. That's the best part of it. It's like when you are seeing those very nice musicians going up on stage and make it, you know, making rock and roll and making the hell out of it. So we'll see you there. We'll see you there in a few minutes and in a few seconds, actually. It's amazing, it's like, look at that. And if, I don't know if you see like the people there, it's like 10,000 people over there. That's crazy, that's crazy. And they're rocking it. And like, Ben Scott Steck is doing like such a big job, you know, he never stops. So we just left the stage and Ryerson killed it. They killed it and so you saw all the guitars that we checked and spoke with Scott earlier. And I mean I hope you enjoyed the show if you were there because it was like unbelievable. And Ryerson is really like something that proves that there is a new generation of rock and roll and that's for us like you know guitar shops you know all around the world, wherever you are, it's like Rival Sons prove that, you know, some dudes like, actually there is a stray cat right now, but it means like, you know, there is some future. And as you saw those, you know, Scott's guitar, there is like vintage stuff and modern stuff. And I hope you really enjoy the rig rundown of the video. I hope you enjoy the, the meeting with Scott. And I see you guys in the next episode. Again, thank you very much for watching us because you make this YouTube channel special and thank you for being part of it. Thank you very much. Yeah.